The more I subject myself to discomfort, the happier I am. A few years ago when I was making YouTube videos on my old channel, I was forcing myself out of my comfort zone so frequently to subjecting myself to discomfort and upgrading who I was as a human being. Now that I'm a little bit older, I don't think that there is a one-to-one -one relationship, but I think that it's definitely worth something. Because back in the days, at those times, I felt amazing. I had so much energy and I felt so optimistic. I even had the energy to catch the train at 6 in the morning to make it on time for the recording sessions in Amsterdam. Because that is where I every weekend went to make new videos. Back then it felt like a game to get out of your comfort zone. Trying to find the edge in what is capable. And it wasn't only the YouTube videos I was making. Because I felt so much more energetic and optimistic. I started to use this also in other parts of my life. For example the gym. I didn't like working out at all at the beginning. But because I was pushing on the edge with videos. I also started to do new exercises in the gym. Started to introduce myself to new people in the gym. And those were things that were actually far beyond my comfort zone. But I still did them. And what did it bring me? An amazing feeling I can't explain. And of course this feeling didn't last forever. But I will never forget how it felt. So what is enslaving you? What is controlling your thoughts? Is it the television? Feeling your life with images about how life should be? Or is it the internet? Drawing you in and controlling your time? Is it drugs or alcohol numbing your brain? And diminishing your desires? Or is it something as weakness? Or lack of self-discipline? That prevents you from accomplishing what you want to accomplish? So you have to be conscious about what is creeping into your mind? What's getting in there? What are you letting in there? And what does it want you to do? As you probably have heard a lot of times before, before. You only have one life, so don't waste it, being controlled by someone or something else. I started to recognize the importance of reflecting on the comfort zone and the effect it has on your overall well-being as a person and the way you live. So in this video we're going to talk about a few things that I've learned about the comfort zone and how you can get a better understanding about how the comfort zone works. So you can start living your life at your own terms instead of its terms. Because it actually has a lot more control over your life than you might think. So what is the comfort zone and how does it work? One of the most important things to remember about the comfort zone is that everything you're physically capable of doing fits into one of the two. Inside the comfort zone or outside the comfort zone. Inside the comfort zone is actually everything that's easy to do, what takes little to no effort and takes no mental resistance. Because that thing became so easy, your brain went and placed it into the comfort zone. On the other hand, you have outside of the comfort zone. That's everything that's actually hard to do. That takes a lot of resistance. Think about something simple as waking up early in the morning. For example, you have gaming. It's easy to do, it doesn't require a lot of effort, there's no mental resistance, and for most of the people it's fun. And on the other hand, you are studying. It's harder to do, it takes a lot more of your mental qualities. You can find it boring, and you don't have any instant gratification. But when you level up in a game, or you find something special, you will immediately get that gratification. The more something is out of the comfort zone, the more mental resistance it takes to do that thing. But here's the catch, studying is actually good for you. And you can debate that gaming actually isn't. But the hard thing to understand about the comfort zone is the fact that you can't use it as some sort of metric to know what is bad or what is good for you. For instance, walking is in your comfort zone, but running isn't. But that doesn't mean that walking is bad for you. On the other hand, putting your hands in hot water is probably out of your comfort zone, but isn't good for you. So there isn't a clear line between relationship about things that are inside and outside the comfort zone and the value that these things bring to your life. The only thing that your comfort zone wants and is concerned with is to keep you in it. And the way it does that is not only by making things that are outside of the comfort zone really hard to do. No, it will also make the comfort zone smaller. It will get smaller and harder to escape when you don't do anything about it. Things that were previously on the edge of your comfort zone now became hard to do. And this is something everyone experiences. I mean, in my own life it happens a lot. Like when a new Minecraft update came out and I spent hours playing that game and not doing anything else. Or when the World Cup was on TV, watching football all the time and not doing anything that was outside of my comfort zone. Things that were previously easy to do, for example, get something out of the kitchen or walk upstairs to get something, now became mentally difficult and very hard to bring myself to do it. Okay, so what have we learned right now? In order to keep your comfort zone from getting smaller, we need to do things that are on the edge or outside of our comfort zone to make it larger. But we also learned that the comfort zone on its own is a terrible metric to tell us which activities are useful for us and which are not. So basically we need a solution to this problem. But how do we get there? How do we get out of this circle? I will show these five steps in the next video this Sunday.